Okay, good morning uh, everyone again and uh, welcome to Chemistry 101 and uh, it's Ismail Badrani, an instructor for uh, General Chemistry. Today we, uh, we are going to continue with Chapter 7 about Quantum Theory. So as we said last time, uh, quantum mechanics, it's a, new th it's a modern theory that is based on the idea of having a wave function to describe the electrons and from this wave function uh, we can use the Schrodinger equation to obtain information about the, uh, the, the complex uh, nature of the electrons and the atom. And the first thing we obtain from the equation is the quantum numbers, which are the basic of everything we know about chemistry so far. The quantum numbers are four, uh, and these uh, are n, which uh, is the principal quantum number, and it's the main quantum number. 1, 2, 3, 4. We have L, which is the angular quantum number. We have also ML, which is the magnetic quantum number. We have the spin, which is spin quantum number. Now, each one of these have its uh, conditions and have its characteristics and have its numbers, and we're going to go over them uh, in detail. The first one is the main quantum number or the principal quantum number, which is N. And this n can take values of 1 to infinity. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and it can be 0. And this one is the principal quantum number. It starts with 1, so that's why we have 1s, 2s, 3s. This n determines the energy of the orbital, OK? And I'm going to define the word orbital in a few seconds. Now, the next quantum number uh, is the angular quantum number, or the angular momentum quantum number, which is L. Now, this L can take zero, so it could be zero. But L is always uh, a lower digit than N. So if N is five, the maximum number of L is four. And if N is nine, then the, the maximum number of L is is eight, and so, and so on. So L is always uh, taking values from zero to N minus one. OK, so that's what L. L goes, it can take different values. So it's, only, it's not only one value, so it goes from Zero, it can be zero, not like n. Two n minus one. So if n is one, so zero to n, zero to n minus one. That means zero to zero. That means it's zero. So there is only one value for l when n is equal to one. When n is two, then you have two possibilities. L can be zero or one because l can take values from zero to n minus one. In this case, n is two, so two minus one is one. So therefore, l can be zero or one, and so on. Now, uh, when quantum mechanics first came in, uh, chemists they don't like too much mathematics, they don't like numbers, so they want to give t uh, names for everything. And that's why they started, think they started uh, giving names for the L values. So L is equal to zero, we call it S orbital for sharp. L1 is P orbital, which is principal. And L is two is D orbital, which is diffuse, and F and G and so on. So these are the names for the L values, and you should memorize these. This is very important, especially the first four. So S, P, D, F, okay? S is 0, P is 1, D is 2, and F is 3. And what is the meaning of L? It's, it gives the shape or the volume of the space of the, uh, of the uh, orbital, okay? And we're going to summarize this in a few seconds. Now, uh, we have something also called a shell and a subshell. For n equals z, uh, 1, that's a shell, okay? And for n equals 2, that's another shell, okay? And for n, n equals 3, that's another shell and so on. So for each n, we have something called a shell or a big house or a, or a, a chamber that you can imagine, a big, a big house. But inside that big house, we have subshells. So for each L of a given n, there is a subshell. And for example, when you have n equals 2, that's a shell. So that's a shell equals n equals 2. But inside that shell, you have l equals 0 and l equals 1. And therefore, uh, we have two subshells, which are the 2s and 2p orbitals. And you're going to uh, visualize this very soon uh, when we solve examples. Now, the third quantum number is the ml. And ml, the ml is, is easy. It goes from minus l to plus l. So if l is, let's say, 2, it looks all the values from minus 2 to plus 2. So you have minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. If you have, let's say, ML is equal 5, which could be, then uh, ML goes from minus 5 to plus 5, okay, and, and so on. 
That's the end of values. Uh, and the last quantum number, which is the spin quantum number MS. Now, this MS spin quantum number, some people describe it as uh, when we were in school that says the electron is spinning around the nucleus or anti-clockwise and clockwise, okay? Or it says that the uh, electron is spinning up or down. Now, let me be frank with you. The spin quantum number has uh, no, actually no physical meaning, okay? So this is just uh, ideas to uh, get the uh, picture close to your minds. But the matter of the fact is that spin quantum number does not have an actual physical meaning. There is, the spin cannot, the, the, the electron is just too small and it's very difficult to understand. It does not rotate around the nucleus clockwise or anti-clockwise. But uh, the spin quantum bar numbers from quantum mechanics, it has two values only. It could take two values, either plus half or minus half, okay? For each ML, for each ML. So if ML is one, then you have MS plus half or minus half for the ML value. Now, these are the summary of quantum numbers. So again, N, it's the shell. It's the principal quantum number. It can take one, two, three, four, five. For L, it can get, it's the subshell, okay? It's called the angular quantum number. And it goes from uh, a number zero to N plus N minus one. The ML can take from minus L to plus L, and for MS, it can be a plus minus half. Let's practice this, okay, together, and then uh, we're gonna solve uh, some problems. So first of all, uh, I want everybody to do this with me, please, in a piece of paper, if you don't mind, uh, because you need to understand it really well. So let's start with n equals, the first value of n is equal, n equals 1, okay? So for n equals 1, the L, uh, the definition of L can take from 0 to n minus 1, okay? That's what the L values. But n minus 1 is equal 1 minus 1, which is 0. Then L is 0, which is an S orbital, okay? So we got L here. Now for ML, ML can take from minus L to plus L. But we don't have anything. We have only 0, so ML is 0. And for ms, it could be plus half or minus half for each ml. We have only one value for ml, which is zero. Then this is the uh, quantum, quantum numbers for uh, the first shell, which is uh, n equals one. So for n equals one, we have n, l, ml, and ms as follows. They are one for for n, and l we said it's zero, and for ml it's zero, and this is ms plus minus half, so we can write it down like this. This is called a set of quantum numbers. This is a called a set of quantum numbers. It's like an ID, as you if you have your Qatar ID or your QUID. Uh, each electron have its own its uh, its uh, definite set of quantum numbers, which and he won't share it with anyone with anyone. So this is and this set of quantum number is actually for the one s orbital, because okay. Now before we continue the next one, I just want to re remember you with a table here that is very important for you. The table is. For L values, if L is 0, then it's S orbital. If L is 1, it's P orbital. If it is L is 2, then it's D orbital. And if it is 3, then it's F orbital. Now, what is an orbital? I keep repeating this word, orbital. Now, you can write this down in your notes. The definition of orbital is the space that, according to quantum mechanics, the definition of orbital is the space where the electrons might be located, okay? This is the definition of orbital. It's the space where the probability of electron is high or where the electrons might be. Because in quantum mechanics, 
the quantum mechanics is based on probabilities, okay? It does not say that the electron is exactly there. It gives you a space or a, a, a place that says, okay, there, there might be a high probability that the electrons are there. This is the, what the quantum mechanics can tell you. Okay. Now, let's move on to do the other tree for n equals 2. For n equals 2, then let's think about L. L can go from 0 to n minus 1. So it could be 0, 1, or that's it, 0 and 1, because it goes from 0 to n minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So the maximum value of L is 1. Now we have two values of L, so each one is called subshell. So we have here two subshells. Now what are these subshells? For the L equals zero, uh, the ML for it is the same as what we did before. So ML is zero, and this one MS you have also plus minus half for that zero. Okay. Now for L equals 1, let's think about ML now. ML, the definition of ML can go from minus L to plus L. So for 1, you have minus 1, you have 0, and you have plus 1. And for MS, for each one of these, you have plus minus half here, you have plus minus half here, and you have plus minus half here. So therefore, to summarize, here we have a set of quantum level for, for the first subshell, which is 2 for n and 0 for L and 0 for ML and plus minus half. That's actually the 2s orbital. And for these ones, you have uh, three subshells. The first one is 2 and then 1 for the L and then minus 1 plus minus half and then 2 1 for L and then 0 plus minus half, you see, and then 2, 1, and then plus 1, and 1, here. And 1 plus 1, yes, yeah, I'm coming to that. Now, how many subshells here? We have two, three subshells, okay? Now, as I said, people in chemistry they don't like to call uh, uh, no, they don't like numbers too much. So that's why they are they start to, to name these things. Okay. Now remember from my table here at the bottom that the L zero is s orbital and the L one is p orbital and the L is two is d. Right. So if you go back here. This is the s orbital, actually, okay, which we call it 2s, and this is the p orbital. And they call these minus 1, 0, and for ml now, so ml can take, as I said, values from minus l to plus l, so l is 1, so therefore it can be minus 1, 0, or plus 1. And therefore they call this px orbital, and this is the py orbital, and this is the pz orbital. And this is where these py, pz, p came from. So this is actually the px, py, and pz. Actually, two py, two px, two pz. Okay. Now, how many subshells we can have here? Now, here we have two subshells. Because sorry, uh, we have four subshells here. One for the two s and three. But the question is, how many? The questions will always come. How many electrons? Now we have here. Uh, let me just zoom this out so you don't you see everything. Now for the n equals 1, we have L equals 0, it's only 1L, which we call it the s orbital. And for ML, it's only one value, it's 0. But we can put ms plus, plus half or minus half, and therefore we can put two electrons in this subshell. This one can occupy two electrons here. The first electron will be having a quantum number is 1, 0, 0, plus half, and the other, quant and the other electron can have 1, 0, 0, minus half. Okay, now for this one, you want to think how many electrons you can put here. If you think about it, you can put actually two, eight electrons here. The first electron will be 
in the two s orbital two zero zero half and the other one two zero zero minus half and you have you can put two electrons in the px okay because it's two one minus one half and two one minus one minus half two electrons in the px two electrons in the py two electrons in the pz a total of six in addition to that two s you have two eight electrons so at home when i finish my lecture please i want you to do by yourself the three for the n equals a three it's solved in the book but i want it, i want you to do it and find out how many electrons and how many subshells you can put in the n equals a three okay okay so now we knew the uh, the ml and the l and all of that uh, let Doctor? Us, yes um from where you get get the eight in the plastic yeah i will explain i will explain more I, it's uh, it's not easy at the beginning I, you will you will have to solve some more questions in order to do that now um Okay, now let's see, let, let's, this table summarizes everything we talked about here. So, uh, as I said, so let's repeat this again. So n is equal, uh, can be one, two, three, it cannot be zero. Just remember that n cannot be zero. Okay, so it can be one, two, three, four, four. Now for each n, you have too many possibilities for L and ML and NS. Now the L can go from zero to n minus one. So for n equals 1, you have 1 minus 1 is 0. Therefore, you have only one value for L, which is 0, which is the S orbital. Now for ML, ML can take values from minus L to plus L. So if L is 7, okay, let's imagine that L is 7. Then ML can take minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. You get that? So here, let's say in this table, at the very end, you have L equals 2. Then what are the values for ML? It could be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. You get that? So it's the range between minus L, 2, plus L. And uh, the total number of orbitals, or the total number of subshells, is the uh, total numbers of possibilities for ML. Okay? Now let's solve some few questions before we go on and, uh, and do that. Now, uh, this question says, what are the four quantum numbers for each of the following two electrons for six, six orbital? He says there are six, there is a six S orbital, okay? And we need to think what, what are the four quantum numbers for six S orbital? Okay. So when I say six S, what is, you think, what is N, what is L, what is ML, and what is MS? Now, clearly here, N is 6, because when I say 6S, that means N is 6, okay? When I say 6P, that's N is 6, and so on. Now, L is 0, because of the fact that this is S orbital, and you can tell from the table that uh, an S orbital corresponds to an L value of 0. ML also is zero because ML can can go from minus L to plus L. We have no, we have only one value for L, which is zero. That means ML is zero. Now here it says the six S orbital it can contain two electrons, so this could be minus half or plus half. We don't know yet. So this is plus half or minus half. This might be the set of quantum numbers for an S for. A six S orbital. Now let's practice this again for another thing. Okay, let's say that we have a three a three P X orbital. Okay, an electron sitting in a three P X orbital. What do you think N is? Anybody? You can use the chat window. Everybody knows what is N for this. Uh, doctor. Yeah. Three. Okay. So that's good. So N is equal to three. Now, what is L, do you think? Um, it's either one no, or no. two. For, no, no. For, if you go back to the table that I drew here in the previous slide, we have a table that table does not change. The names of or the orbitals. Uh, it's one. Yeah, one. You're right. So here, where is that one, though? Um, 
I lost it. Okay, here it is. Okay, so if you look, uh, I lost. Uh, so for 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 the table, I can make the table again here. It's the table that S S P D F. Okay, S is always zero for L. I'm sorry. Okay, for the value of L, and this is one, two, three. So when I say six, three P, I told you the P. So P is is one. That's the L value. Now for M L, the P orbital, which has a value of L equals one, has three M values. So this is L equals one. So the M L can be minus one. 0 and 1, so, so we said this, we call this Px, and we said this is Py, and this is Pz. Now I said that this is the Px, that means this is the, I specified here precisely that I'm talking about the Px orbital, which has an ml value of minus 1, okay? Now I didn't tell you that if this electron is spinning up or down, so this could be plus half or minus half, okay? Now let's practice this one more time so you guys can take the idea. Yes. Uh, doctor, it's always plus or no, minus no, no. half, like we there are no cases where it could be only plus half. Or... But uh, I will ask you a question here okay. just to practice. Let's say that I have uh, three, one, one, Half. This is a set of quantum numbers. This is an ID, okay? Now, if I ask you in the exam or not exam, which orbital this set of quantum numbers belong to? Somebody else, please. Let me just see. Oh, okay. Many people are asking. Again, I have here. A, cross, a set of quantum, I give you an ID, and this ID, let's say it's lost. Which orbital this set of quantum belongs to? 3, 1, 1, 2. Uh, uh, what, what is this? Is this a 3S, 4S, 4D, 3F? What is this? Anybody can think and come up with an answer? Three one one half. Anybody want to try? Three S. Three P Z. Hana. Three P Z. Okay. Let's turn. When I say three, that means n equals three. This is n, right? This is l. This is m l, and this is m s. Okay. So you guys said 3pz. Let's see if this is correct or not. So this is a 3, right? When I say L is 1, is P, that's right. And the P orbital has the P orbital has three, uh, three values, minus 1 or ML, 0 plus 1, right? This is uh, X, Y, Z. So uh, actually this is the ML, which is 1, which is Z. Yeah, that's right, 3pz. Yes, exactly. That's the right answer. Because the P, we know P because of this value, of the second value, L is equal 1. And we know Z because the P, is, the P orbital has three values, minus 1, 1, plus, plus 1. And the minus 1 is the X, and the, and the 0 is the Y, and the plus 1 is the Z. So this is for a 3PZ orbital. And actually, in this 3PZ orbital, there might be two electrons, okay? One is spinning up, I draw an electron like that, and one is spinning down. This is how I represent a spin, a electron spin. But the matter of fact is, this is the electron that is spinning up because it's plus half minus minus half, okay? So the three one, the three pz orbital can occupy two electrons. Any orbital in Earth can occupy two electrons. This is a rule. Any orbital, three pz, three pi y, three pz. 3s, any, any, any orbital, can occupy two, only two electrons, okay? And therefore, this is the electron that is spinning up, not down because of the plus half. Of course, we're going to solve so many questions to practice this, but for now, we need to uh, move on to the uh, meaning of orbitals. Now, 
Uh, let's go back here and tell you the meaning of orbitals before we can go through this. So guys, uh, uh, for the four quantum numbers N, L, M, L, and M, S, now we need to know the meaning of these orbitals or what is the physical meaning of each of these orbitals. Now, first of all, the n, which is the principal quantum number, this will give you the energy and the size of the orbital. Okay, the bigger the n, the bigger the energy, and the more distance from the nucleus. This is n. So when I say 3s and 2s, that means 3s is bigger than 2s and it's higher in energy. That's simply as n. For l, it gives you the shape of the orbital. So for or the s orbital, it's spherical, so it does not have any disk in shape. But for the p orbital, they have a bell shape, two bells like this, like the eight, number eight. But the px and py and pz, the difference between them is the orientation in space. And therefore, this, uh, sorry, uh, that's the ml. The l, the, the l, the angular, the angular quantum number, it gives you the shape of the orbital. So for s, it's spherical. For l, it's uh, bell shape. For d, it's different shape. So the l gives you the shape of the orbital, and that's why the S shape is different than the L, and then the D, then the F, and so on. For ML, it gives you actually the orientation. So for P orbitals, they all look the same, but one of them is in the X direction, one of them is in the Y direction, and one of them is in the Z direction. So they all look the same, and they all look exactly the same for P orbitals. But ML will give you what orientation it is. And for the spin, it also gives you the, um, the spin, spinning up or down, as we said. Or as they say in school, it's going uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. However, I don't believe it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. So, um, so first of all, let's talk about the shapes of orbitals and how do you do that. First of all, orbitals do not have well-defined shapes because the wave function characterizing each orbital extends from nucleus to infinity. So this is something from quantum mechanics. That quantum mechanics found that it's very it's, it's impossible to locate the exact, exactly the, the electron. There's something called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which states that you cannot determine the exact position and the momentum of the electron. And therefore, you cannot exactly know where the electron is. Actually, the electron goes, the, the probability or the possibility of finding the electron, it goes from nucleus to infinity. But we cannot live with this. Therefore, we define the orbital to be a 95% of that probability, so for convenience, okay? And for the S orbital, the S orbital looks spherical. So you see here, this is the nucleus in the middle, and the green area, this is the probabilities, okay, or the possibilities of finding the electron around this nucleus. This is what we call the electronic cloud. This represents only one electron, so we're talking only about one electron here. So any place here in the green area, this is the possibility of finding the electron. Of course, according to quantum mechanics, electron can be found outside this area. It can be found even outside my computer, outside this space, 10, 20 meters away from this. But for convenience and for practical reasons, we define the orbital to be 95% of the 95% uh, of the uh, space. This is one representation of the S orbital. Okay. In the book, it says actually 90%. Some books say 95. And this is uh, and and uh, this is another representation of the uh, orbital, uh, which is the we plot uh, it in x y, where the x is the distance from the nucleus and the y is the radial probability. And as you see here, at distance equals zero, that means at the nucleus you have radial probability equals zero. That means the electron cannot be in the nucleus. And this is a success for quantum mechanics that it proved that it's impossible to have the electron inside the nucleus. But as you go away from the nucleus, the probability increases, of course, and it decreases after some time. Now, for the S orbital, it looks spherical, as you know. And uh, as I said, that uh, as n increases, the size of the orbital increases. So therefore, uh, the 1s is smaller than 2s, is smaller than the s, and so on. OK? For the L orbital, equals one, which is a P orbital. We have three Px, Py, Pz. They look like a bell shape, two spheres attached to each other. Each other. And therefore, uh, you have uh, one in the Px, one in the Py, one in the Pz. 
So here, uh, this is what I tell you about the L that gives you the shape. When L was zero for S orbital, it was spherical. For L equals one, now it is different shape. For the ML, it gives you the directions, okay? Now, the PX actually and the PY and the PZ orbitals, they are they have the same size and the same shape and therefore in the same energy, okay? Uh, they are, might be different in directions. One is directing in X, one directing in Y, one direct, but they have the same shape all together. They have all of the same size, the 2PX and 2PY and 2PZ. And therefore we call them degenerate. Degenerate means they have the same energy. The word degenerate in chemistry means they have the same energy. This applies also to other P orbitals like 3P and 3 3px, 3py, 3pz. Now for the d orbital, their shape is a little bit more complicated, okay? Because the l now is two, it's bigger. And the d orbitals they have five mLs because for l equals two, then you have mL values. So again, for the people who are asking what is the uh, speaking for mL, this is again I'm, I'm repeating this again. The mL means from minus l to plus l. So L is equal to 2, therefore you have to take the full range from minus L to plus L. So it's minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Then you have five values for, for ML. And that's why we have five subshells for the D orbital. When L is equal to 2, that means D according to the table. Then you have five Ds. We call them 5D, uh, sorry, 3 uh, so it's 5D, so it starts with 3, 3D. And 3D, 3D, 3D. So they have names 3D X square, 3D Y square, 3D X. You don't have to remember the names, uh, but you need to just uh, uh, imagine that the shapes of the D orbital is different than the P because they have four loops. Many people make a confusion between the PX orbital and the 3D Z square orbital. If you look at my slides, if you look at the, my pointer here in red, this is the 3DZ, 3DZ square. It looks like a BX orbit, but it's not actually. This one has two loops, and there is also a kind of a, a ring in the middle here. This is a 3DZ square orbital, not a 3PX orbital. Again, these orbitals, they are also degenerate. That means they have the same energy.